Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, I, I foolishly chose Mother's Day, I, unaware actually that it was Mother's Day, and I apologise because otherwise we probably would have had more people watching and, and more members of our team here. But everybody's busy with their mothers. Uh, so thank you, Tev. I know you're with your mother as well. Thank you for joining us. No problem. No problem. Thanks for having me. And uh, Tevin, uh, for those of you that don't know, so I'm Brian from the QTube. Tevin is from Four of Wands, and we produced this film together. Uh, first of all, thank you, Tevin, and your partner, Colette, for your brilliant uh, contribution to this project. No worries. Thank you, Brian, for bringing this project to us, too. It was a, uh, that's what the filmmaking is about, isn't it? Collaborating. Yeah, we, re we, really, we really couldn't have done it without you. And in the beginning, we were just going to go and try and make a film, which just terrifies me now to think about how naive we were with the original plan. Uh, you know what? I think most people I meet, uh, you know what? I think you've got to have a bit of that na naivety, to be honest, actually. I was about to say most people are naive about this, but I actually, thinking about it now, you, if you're going to do something big, you have to have some sort of naivety behind you, I've realised. Otherwise, you'll never get, you'll never try anything, I suppose, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And I suppose that if we had um, been attempting to do it without you, <clears throat> I suspect that the scope of the project would have been probably much more modest than we were able to do uh, with your help. I think that we probably would have scaled it down a bit. Perhaps. Um, we'll never know, I suppose, as they say. This is it. This is it. Um, so, yeah, your, your mother, speaking of Mother's Day, your mother was actually there, wasn't she, on the, on the, and your father yeah, for the uh, production? Yeah, actually, you, yeah, because um, a, a lot of times you've got to start trying to bring everybody in as much as possible to set. Um, and so they, they helped us out with the, with food and feeding everybody and uh, being around, which was really helpful. Yeah, they were, they were tremendously helpful. I mean, we had a very busy really... set, didn't we? I just want to... We... Sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say, yeah, it was, it, I just want to say, um, first and foremost, the film looks gorgeous. What we've made is gorgeous. And watching it again and again is... Um, it's really good and you start picking up other things in the music and whatever i'm sure we're going to touch on that now but yeah i just want to say it looks amazing and i'm proud of it and and uh, i think we did a really good job actually considering how early are we are in the filmmaking journey etc cetera, etc cetera. so i mean it's a good solid piece of work so i think pat on the back for yourself and for us and everyone involved I think so. I think everybody, and there were quite a lot of people involved. I mean, you can see it on the credits. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think that every single person that was involved in the project, and even some people who weren't officially involved, like your parents, they, um, they really, it just, I loved, the thing I loved, one of the things I loved about this production, which was, of course, a tremendous relief, <clears throat> because we were on a very tight schedule, was just how well everyone gel together on the two days that we were on set i mean it really worked so beautifully and everybody did their job and they didn't sort of try to do more they didn't underperform in their job and then of course the same in the post-production as well i mean you know jamie shout out to jamie really for the visual uh, achievement really with the film absolutely fantastic but i mean everybody you know the writers the directors the hair the makeup and everybody really yeah, yeah, shout yeah, out, shout out to that. everybody. That's right. Uh, a few funny things happen on set, you know, that you don't, you don't foresee. You never do. Um, but that's, I suppose, that's the whole. You can't, oh, you can't um, plan for all of the, all of the things that happen. I suppose you just got to hope that you pull your weight, and people do pull their weight, and and they do more. Like you just said, they do more than pull their weight. You know, make sure everybody's um, working properly and. And having a good time, mainly, you know? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, <clears throat> so just to quickly reiterate or recap, I mean, this project was conceived 
<clears throat> to enable us to have our first proper film in our library for composers and sound designers that we actually completely own, something that was professionally produced to as great an extent as we could manage within, within whatever budget we could raise. And of course, when we conceived it, we had no idea of what the budget might be. <clears throat> and we spoke to the writers and directors first, because Archie knew them quite well, and they were, quite, they were keen. And, and uh, um, Jamie was also involved in that very early on, the cinematographer. And then we thought, well, let's speak to four of ones and see if they'll, uh, you know, mind being a sounding board for this process. And then you guys came on board and it, and it really went well. I mean, you guys brought, um, you know, we raised a reasonable budget through the community. Thank you to everyone that supported it through a Kickstarter. Thank you, Thank you to the community definitely for that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was a brilliant Sorry. example of everybody <clears throat> believing in the project. And um, we were writing the script really at the same time, you know, and um, when I say we, I mean, <laughs> I wasn't involved particularly in that process other than staying, you know, abreast of everything that was going on. But the script was being written um, and locations were being scouted for and stuff like that. And it all just came together. You know, you guys brought quite a lot really to the table besides sort of expertise. I mean, you, you, you were, I think you were... I lose track of who did what, to be honest. I think you guys were very involved. Or was, it, or was it Frankie that had the contact at the care home? How did we manage to get that location? He did. He did, he did have the... He, it was Frankie that did have the contact at the care home. And that was actually... Well, I mean, to, to be honest with you, early doors, if we want to talk early doors, um, one thing that was very strange for me was the fact that uh we would sort of we were raising the budget for a film that we hadn't had a script for and i will take this forever because i remember saying well i don't know i don't understand what budget was trying to raise without without knowing what the script is and then so it was up to the writers to then write a story that frankie had already had in his arsenal to that to that budget which was uh which was not normally the way we'd go around it but also you know you don't have to do everything by the book and it worked and and luckily yeah so that leads on to the care home because he had this story maybe brewing in his in his paper in his paperwork or whatever in his notes um he also knew that he had to contact at the care home and they were able to let us use the care home to shoot the whole film in which was again another world i've never done that before and i, I actually don't know Maybe it will happen again. I know it can be done now because I've done it, but that's the naivety kicking in. You just, you just sort of just going for it, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, it was a fantastic, absolutely fantastic location. But of course, <clears throat> you know, that came with its challenges because it was a working care home with, with real residents and real work to be done. And we were trying to, um, you know, do a great job, but equally not uh, interfere really with, with their day-to-day -day life. And, um, you know, that threw up lots of interesting challenges. But actually, I remember going back a little bit on what you've said. I remember how it came about that we ended up <coughs> raising the budget first and writing the film after all, which is, of course, completely the wrong way around because, you know, you, you, as you've said, I mean, you need, you need a script and then you know how many locations you need, how many actors and all that sort of thing. And then you can put a kind of spreadsheet together and and then try and raise the funds. And we did it rather backwards. And, and the main reason, I think, from memory, was that we had a story, we drew up a budget for it, and then what happened was that some fairly uh, well-known writers and, and, and producers came out with a film that was <clears throat> unfortunately quite close, and so we felt that we had to do something different, and that was how it happened, I think. Right. I don't know if I, I don't know, because I actually came in, Colette, my business partner, she was actually on board with you guys first, and then I met you on a similar pro, uh, similar medium as this, which was a YouTube live stream, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then I, I came into it at that point, so okay, so you, so you, this is the nature of the business, I suppose, it's always changing, so you guys had the story that, I do, rec I do recall that now, actually. It was so long ago, eh, Brian? So much stuff has been done since those since those early early days. Yeah, I'm just trying to recall. Was... I'm just trying to recall the um, schedule. So we we started the Kickstarter in the late summer, 
And then we were right, we finished the script and then Tara came on board thanks to you guys. And I think we were able to announce that during the Kickstarter, which was really a brilliant, brilliant timing and a brilliant boost actually. It was, it was a good boost and she's amazing. And, and watching her at work on set is uh, actually for me, she's probably one of the best actresses I've ever, I've ever seen. So she, in fact, she is the best actress I've ever seen. Um, working and seeing her process along with um, Ronald and Tishinga, who are our other co-stars. They're fantastic. They were absolutely in the zone, uh, no messing about, uh, straight, you know, had the performance down to a T. And there's, some, there's things that I noticed as well as somebody who's got experience in films, you may not, Brian. But, um, for example, Ronald, he would he would ask for some notes and then make sure every take was taken the same. And I've worked with other actors where they've gone, you know what, I'll try it like this one and this one, and I'll try it like this one and that one, and I'll try it like this one and this one. But because of Ronald's experience, he knows that there's going to be a few different shots and they all need to have the same thing. So the notes is done at the beginning, and, and I'm going to take this forever, but the notes are going to be taken at the beginning for his act for his performance and then and every single performance after that will be to those notes because when we're cutting around in the editing and I've been in a situation where we're cutting around in the editing and somebody's line doesn't match and we can't get to that sharp so sharp so so yeah that was just that was just pure um watching masters at work when it comes to Ronald and um Tara and and Tishinga and everyone else yeah I mean it was a really um interesting spread wasn't it of experience because I mean you look at Tara and Ronald tremendous experience I mean I remember <clears throat> listening to um, Ronald talking a little bit during some of the breaks in that green room and um, you know he was talking about some of the film sets that he'd been on he'd been on some real epics hadn't he like some David Lean or something like that I was so busy running around trying to keep the uh, set in order I didn't even get a chance to talk to him like that so I don't even know yeah, he was on something ridiculous like Lawrence of Arabia or Ben Hur or something like that. You know, doesn't doesn't surprise me at all, actually. Um, by the way, our green room is probably worth mentioning because I kind of want to. I don't know about you, Brian, but I think giving these guys who are viewing it right now it's a little bit of insight into sort of like you know the small things as well is important. You know, I, I think the green room, as an example, you know. We, a little a little set story if you like we we basically hired 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 a Winnie Bago is that even the right word a RV camper van type thing because we needed something for a few set members to sleep in crew members to sleep in uh while we were there also something to heat the food up or cook the food and also then a wardrobe area so so that was I can't remember how much that was but we rented something like that and then on the day, amazingly, the care home had let us use their activities room. In the whole home, they have this activities room, and they'd blocked that off for us for two days, and that was such a, a godsend, really, because it was massive, well bigger than the RV or the Winnebago, whatever you want to call it, which was parked at the end of the drive. Still very useful, that was, but still very useful. But, um, but yeah, the green room was literally... Um, the activities room and it had a, a kitchenette in there for us to have teas and coffees enough space to put um you know we could have our crew call in the morning and have a chat about the day and then whoever's not on set can come and wait in there and it was at its own it was connected to the care home in the warm and that was really 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 helpful brilliant <clears throat> yeah it was brilliant i mean the care home <clears throat> the care home really bent over backwards and I mean we had some of the residents in the film on the yoga scene and um, <clears throat> you know they really made it uh, they really tried to accommodate us and and you were there you, you know some of you guys were there for for a few on a couple of different visits prior to the shoot of course to scope out the sort of locations and look at the camera angles and all that kind <clears throat> of stuff um, uh, I know there's a word for that which escapes me actually when you're kind of planning where the angle is wrecking yeah um and uh of course we were worried I, rem I remember we were worried about um the fact that around the care home there's all these beepers going off all the time but we were quite lucky on the day yeah definitely those beepers were tough and you mentioned earlier actually that we were you know we were 
tried really hard because we worked in a working care home you know it wasn't shut down the, the the care home was still very active and people running around all over the place uh, um and we were trying hard and we did we did do very well at not getting in anybody's way because of our scheduling etc cetera, etc cetera. but one of the things we should have um one of the things we should have um we should mention is that was we we there was ringing and, and bells going off the the phones were going off the hook because each room has a a call or whatever and we had to make sure that that wasn't in our way much as as much as we went in their way that what that wasn't in yeah there were lots lots of factors that came into play um but yeah we we pulled it off i mean i remember i was really anxious because <clears throat> you know we had quite a strict regime going into the shoot where we all had to do covid tests and then share the covid tests and everything the covid test results and um i was really freaking out thinking you know if tara or somebody fundamental to the project doesn't pa doesn't pass their covid test that we're gonna be totally up the swanny so we were really lucky with everything yeah yeah i don't know yeah the covid the people have probably got their own opinions on all that COVID stuff but you were right you're right anything could have happened and anything still can you know even till the day even till the probably like today you know even till today where the film's released or maybe when we did the live we did the live release something can always go wrong <laughs> definitely something can always go wrong you know so uh so yeah, we we were lucky. You can make your own luck as well. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. I mean, everybody worked really hard to try to make sure that we weren't relying on luck, basically, um, yeah. as much as much as possible. Um, and yeah, we you know that that came through. I mean, like the thing that another thing that impressed me was the. You know, it's the first time I've been on a film set and it was just the slickness. A lot of this was down to you, actually, personally. I mean, one of your main roles, really, wasn't it, on the two days of the shoot, was Definitely. making sure that we stuck to the schedule, yeah? Definitely. Like, how challenging was that? So, just to give everyone a bit of an insight, uh, we shot this whole film in two days on, the, on set and... Um, <clears throat> just one camera right is that right yeah just one camera yeah um, yeah yeah one camera so we had to we had to like move this camera around to all those different rooms like the bathroom and the big room and the bedroom and all that we had to keep moving it around and we had to get everything done in two days as well as like working around the residence and all that kind of stuff and a lot of the sort of success of sticking to that schedule without people losing tempers and stuff like that was really down to you. You, 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 you know, that was great to watch, really. You were running it like a military operation. Yeah, two things. One, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I, I do have to say, though, that one person who was, you know, and didn't really have to be this person who was really, really helpful in doing and making sure the schedule was um on point was jamie the dop he from the get-go had had um took a lot of time as well to to go through the schedule and the shots and know how long each thing was going to take um he does also like a lot of dops like to make sure that he's got it right on set and so i and trust me i know the camera crew sometimes they get annoyed at me because i'm going right are we going to shoot something or what <laughs> Um, because I'm not so technical on set, so when it comes to comes to that stuff, I know things take time, and they do take time. And for things to look as gorgeous as they do, you have to have somebody like Ian, the gaffer, taking his time to set the lights up, or you know, Jamie setting the shot up, and then also Frankie and Bailey thinking about, okay, all right, you know, it, it all takes time, and I know it all takes time. But then you got somebody like me breathing down the neck, who's got the numbers in front of him, going, well. You know, we've only got, we can only shoot this two more times and we have to move on. And in some instances, I think we did actually drop a whole, a whole thing that day. And, and you can't even tell in the film, but so I think we had to, there was a bit we had to, uh, some files he had to go through and, I, you know, we had to make the executive decision. We haven't got time for this. We don't have to drop that whole cut, you know what I mean? Or whatever you want to call it, that um, cut scene or short, whatever. Uh, don't even know the word for it, but basically it was just like a bit of a filler. 
filler really of him going over some notebooks so like how yeah. would you compare that i mean if you it seems quite a while ago now so this was like in november 2022 that we did the shoot um like how from your memory of it how does that compare with other sets like the the vibe on other sets but also the process like how would you compare it with other ones that you've worked on um the vibe on the set was probably one of the best um i actually think it was very slick and i think you're actually quite lucky to be to have that as your first film i do think this it would you know we had we had we had a brilliant question from somebody who sounded like they knew what they were talking about when we did the live screening and he was just absolutely shocked that we managed to get that done with one camera in two days for 15 minutes and um so so yeah that was um that was incredible and yeah the the the, the it, sometimes you don't really notice how slick it is until later on or you go to another set uh, i've been to sets where I've actually been to sets where uh, for actual properly big feature film sets, you know, as, as just a help or whatever. And they're just, they're a mess. And I'm thinking, I think I've taken, I've taken experience from those things and saying, look, my sets aren't going to be like that. Not one bit. Hopefully not. Anyway. It's probably, but yeah, I think how, as it compared to other sets I've been on, I think it was quite slick. Nothing really went wrong. And we 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 got it all jam packed. I think it's probably given me a fairly unrealistic idea of how smoothly shooting a film uh, might might go, and I'll probably get a shock the next on the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, we'll see how it goes. I mean, if you do get a shock, then obviously you know who to call. You can call us up again. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you can find an interview with Tara, by the way, on our YouTube channel if you want to get uh, an insight into her perspective on things. And then we're also planning a live stream with Ilmo, who was the composer for Activities They Live In. And what we're going to talk about is specifically the music on the film. Excuse me. And we're going to look into the door. We're going to look at his, his music and break it down discuss some of the decisions that he made, discuss some of the feedback that he got from the directors and so on in, during the process. And we're going to, um, you know, answer any questions as well. Again, there's going to be like a live chat. So if anybody wants to get involved in that with different questions and observations and so on, then you're very welcome. We've got various discussions and ideas going on about the next films to make, not just one, but multiple projects of different sizes and shapes. So yeah, it's all exciting times at the QTube. Thanks for thanks to everyone for tuning in. Thanks Ted for giving up part of your um, Sunday evening and Mother's Day and all of that again. No and problem. Happy, happy Mother's Day, Day to everybody. Day. Yeah, take care everyone. Have a great day. Have a great evening, and I'll speak to you next week. Hopefully.